That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about number 10, which is the 10th film directed by Alex Van Warmerdam uh, that is being released uh, courtesy of Draft House Films on December 2nd, 2022, officially premiered at the Fantastic Fest in 2021. Do I know any of Alex's other films? Uh, probably not. He's a Dutch director who's been working since the mid 80s. Uh, I think he gained a lot of international acclaim in 2013 when his film Borgman uh, competed at Cannes, which is kind of a black comedic take on Voodoo Saved from Drowning, uh, which starred his usual uh, Jan uh, Bevoot. Yeah, Jan Bevoot, uh, who appears in this film, is a very peripheral character uh, with the lead in that. But Well, I thought this movie was pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. So if a person is interested in watching it, I would go in completely cold. Don't read <clears throat> anything about it. Do not watch this review. Yes. It, because it, you know I'm going to spoil it. We, it. we received an official request not to spoil this film. And I would agree. I think it, it's very interesting to not know anything about it. Okay, the basic story is, is set in modern day. We follow a man named Gunter, who I believe is living in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. He's like a regular guy, probably like late 40s. He appears to be single. He has an adult daughter in college. He's having an affair with a married woman. In fact, Gunter is an actor, like in a community theater setting. And he's having an affair with the director of a show he's auditioning or rehearsing for. Like that director's wife. So the first 25 minutes is sort of like, you know, it starts off like it's an interesting drama, maybe about like the politics and this theater group and the messiness. But all of a sudden, Gunter's walking somewhere and this random man approaches him and whispers something in his ear. And of course, like, what did he whisper? He whispers the word mother. In a foreign tongue. In a foreign language. Okay, so we find out, this is the spoiler, Gunter's an alien from a planet called Lunabor, mm -hmm. and in 1975, this a spaceship landed on Earth in Germany with 10 children, I believe, mm -hmm. and their idea was that they would let these kids, like, they, they would sort of spread them out and see if humans will take care of them and what their lives would be like. And now in modern day, we realize that it appears like some of the adults who were on that spaceship were now obviously much older, and they were only able to keep track of one of the kids, Gunter. Number 10. And they also are in cahoots with the Catholic Church. The spaceship is buried underground, and on top of the spaceship is like a, a church. So... We get a lot of in, uh, a, a lot of scenes with like this priest who's very concerned about what Gunter's up to. They lure Gunter to the church and explain to him, because they go underground into the spaceship, and they show him a video of himself when he was younger with his mother, and they say, we want you to come back home. Your mother's still alive. She'd love to see you. The video they show him even says, yes. we see the mother saying, like, when you see this many years from now, I want you to come back home. So Gunter agrees. But his adult daughter has been following him. Mm -hmm. Lizzie. So when Gunter tells her, like, hey, girl, just so you know, I'm an alien and I'm going back to my planet. She says, well, I want to go, too, because I'm half alien. So he's like, well, come on then. But we know prior to that that they want her, too. Yes, but but they don't want to make it seem like they're asking for her. And it's kind of ambiguous, but probably because she's a mixed breed. We can talk more about it, but they get on the ship and... It's important to know that the like the Catholic Church, this priest in charge, he has finagled his way onto the spaceship because he wants to spread the word of God on Lunabor. And there's a I think the best scene in the movie is Gunter challenging the priest. Like, why are you gonna try to sell something to a group of people who don't know anything about it and they're doing fine without it? And he has this really great analogy of like, you're making people think they're sick so you can sell them medication. We can talk more about that. But the leader of the aliens says, no, let the priest come on because we're a very smart like race of creatures. We, we, we can make choices for ourselves. So if, if he's trying to manipulate people, we'll know. They get on the ship 
and it's kind of uneventful. One important scene is the daughter is sort of snooping around and she comes upon a room that looks like a photo studio and she knew about the video her dad watched. So as the audience and her character, we assume that maybe that video was faked, mm -hmm. which we can talk about. And then the final scene is all the religious people are in like this, like a, uh, like warehouse on the spaceship where all of this religious paraphernalia is. Yeah, like there's an original Caravaggio, I think. Is... Some very, yeah, notable stuff in there. And all the people. And the main alien looks at them like, sorry to do it, and basically shoots all of that stuff out into space. And of course kills them all. The end. I thought this was very interesting. It's very interesting and unpredictable. Uh, and such as I think I've seen several of his films, Alex Van Warmerdam, and also a very dry but kind of funny tone, but not really. So I, I definitely can see how this isn't for everyone, but it's bizarre. Yeah, I'm just gonna go through my notes. So it appears like the dad and his daughter, they're not as strange, but they're not as close as they should be. And I'm not quite clear where the mother is, but she's out of the picture because we don't know if she's dead or not. She's just not in the picture. But the daughter comes to see her dad, but she shows up sooner than he thought, and he's the, he's at his place with the woman he's having an affair with. Isabel. Mm -hmm. So he's like, shit, go hide in the bedroom. So while, he's like, you're going to have to stay there all evening. You can't yeah, leave. while my daughter and her new boyfriend show up. And he rushes them through dinner so fast. I don't even think they had two bites. But during the dinner, the daughter says, oh, I had to go to the hospital yesterday because someone on campus had tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was funny. The dad goes, well, how did that go? Like, well, I would hope she doesn't have it. She didn't show up for dinner with TB. But she says, well, you know, I'm fine. But the x-rays show that I only have like one lung, like operational. And then my other lung is like super small like doesn't do anything and then my one functional lung is like way bigger than it should be and the doctors are telling me like that is not normal like no one has that yeah so they want to know if you'll come down so they can x-ray you and the dad's like hell no i'm not going to a hospital and we find out he's never been sick has never been to a doctor and then we also find out that all these creatures on lunabor only have one lung so it was important to know that the daughter in convincing him also um, the scenes with the priest that we get, it's like this priest sitting at a dinner table, always watching TV and eating. And then his little like minion is this black priest who's always feeding him information. And the first bit of information we get about Gunter is an article where it says that Gunter was found in the woods as a child. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, so it's 25 minutes in that Gunter gets this random man whispering in his ear. And again, I think that was a really... I like the way the film is organized because it it started off in a way that I thought would have been interesting and then it totally goes left mm -hmm. in a direction that I also found interesting. So I feel like I got two movies in one. But or we never two or three. Uh... Or three. Because the entire situation we get what, like three scenes at the rehearsal for this play, and there was I thought the acting and the drama in those scenes was good too. Well, because it, it's all very layered because there's a character named Marius who can't learn any of his lines because, and partially because he is can't, distracted. He, he can't sleep at home because his wife has some chronic illness and she coughs all night long. And but he happens to see Isabel leaving Gunter's apartment and tells the director that, kind of probably as a jab at the director. Like I think your wife's cheating on you with Gunter because he's also kind of nasty to him, and so to punish everybody, the director makes Gunter and Marius change roles. And then the church is alerted of this, and they're like, well, Gunter will never be threatened by this because Marius is going to fail because he can't sleep at night. So they assassinate. The church has the wife assassinated in a, yeah. in a very interesting kind of funny scene. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I think the writing is very subtle, but it's, it's layered. Because they have this minion, this church minion that is observing everything. I'm forgetting his name. Shona Bryan or something. And he basically puts himself in drag and poses as a nurse. Which I thought was funny because when he walks into the sick wife's room pretending to be a nurse, she looks at him up and down like... He goes, I'm here to give you... this lady? I'm here to give you an anti-coughing shot. And she goes, okay, that sounds good. That's great. 
So then Marius is able to succeed in this role that he's usurped from Gunther, and who retaliates by... While Marius is on stage for the main, like, like the first main performance... He nails his foot to the stage. But you it know how, like, on stage, like, there's, like, where the orchestra pit is, mm-hmm. and you can, like, like, a riser? Gunther, like, sneaks in through the riser and nails Marius's foot to the stage. Which is funny because he gets that nail most of the way in before the man reacts. Right, and then some person off stage happens to have like a set of pliers like immediately and pulls it out. I thought that was good. Yeah. Um, the word that Gunter is told is, we're told it's kumaihi, which means mama. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it's like a made up language. Uh, the, the Lunaborian. I thought a funny scene is the minion of the priest, the black priest, um, talks to Gunter and tries to explain to him like, you know... I, like, like I need to vet you before you can meet the main priest so we can tell you about what's going on. And Gutra tells him, you people have blues and jazz. Surely you don't need Jesus. And then the priest is like, oh, because I'm black. He goes, yeah, what, what do you mean by you people? And he, and he says, yeah, Jesus is just a white fabrication. Yeah, I thought that was a really interesting exchange. Um, that man's name, his, uh, the character's Innocence, but that's Mandela Wee Wee. Uh, I think there's a lot of interesting things to talk about because I feel like the Gunter and his daughter are so willing to hop on this spaceship to somewhere because I think they both want to feel like they belong and they both want to feel special but in different ways because Gunter seems lonely, right? Because, I mean, he has this daughter who he doesn't seem super close to. He seems to have a nice little life. He has the cute little place and he is an actor so he obviously has some creativity he wants to unleash But, like, he's so desperate to, like, see his mom and abandon his life. And I thought that was interesting. But then the daughter, she seems to want to go because it's like she wants to feel special. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm different. Let's hop on the spaceship. So I really like that characterization. Uh, I think... Oh, uh, that actor's name is Tom Duispiller, by the way, who played Gunter. Oh, I liked him. Yeah, he was in... Warmerdam's last film, uh, Schneider vs. Bax. The only other thought I had is I thought the movie looks good. I think when we get into the spaceship... The spaceship looks like a, in a big black potato. Or I thought it looked like the rock that jammed our garbage disposal last week. But yeah, I thought it looked good. The, the shots of the spaceship like unearthing and... There's yeah. some really cool camera angles. Well, when everybody gets sucked out into space too. Really, you know, for what must yeah. have been budget, I think looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's shot by Tom Arisman, who has uh, worked with Warmerdam before, uh, and the director provided his own score as well. Oh, uh, I oh go ahead. No, I was gonna say I I did like this movie, so I don't want to say the better story would have been, but I think a fun story adjacent to this would be a comedy where aliens take like religious people to their planet, and they try to indoctrinate this like higher being with their dogma. And all the funny things, like how they're not being fooled. and Because that really was the most interesting part of this movie when Gunther challenges the priest and the main alien's response to it. And it is effective. And the end of the film was kind of satisfying. And not because I'm anti-religion, but because of the arrogance of the priest to think oh, yeah, like, yeah. this like highly evolved species... <laughs> And you think you're going to go up there and pass out your pamphlets and pray your rosary? Like, it just, it's just very arrogant. But, and but, but again, the tone is very droll. I wouldn't exactly yeah. call it a comedy. No, it's thing. not. That's why I'm saying I don't think the better story would have been. I think, a, like, a, another movie could be, like, like a black comedy about what, something adjacent. What would you classify this as, even? It's not a drama. It's not really a comedy. I would say it's, like, sci-fi. Sure, like, sure. Yeah, like a Lo- serious sci-fi movie. Lo-fi sci-fi. Yeah, but I would recommend it. Yeah, it I don't know what it's... Um, I don't know where it'd be available, but... I'm sure somewhere. It came somewhere. out today. Try uh, to find it. Try to find it. And, and uh, looking... A lot of uh, his past films are all available to stream as well. Oh. Alex Van Warmerdam, but... What would you give it? Uh, three out of five. I would give it three out of five as well. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,